here is a case of horseshoe kidney isthmic stone supraepicanal along with the pelvic stone actually 52 year old male patient right loin pain 2 weeks 25 into 31 mm calculus at puj and 3 into 2.5 mm two three stones in the lower calyx or isthmus you can clearly see over the ivc and iota isthmic stone is seen on the right side it's exactly over the iota and ivc apart from that pelvic stone is straight forward this is a stone which is overlapping in supine position on the the spine initially we passed access sheath and then contrast injected the ureter was accessible not previously stented after injecting little more contrast the lateral most calyx which is easily accessible is presented above is punctured above the 12th rib so clearly dipping of the calyx is seen and within one go the puncture happened whether anterior or posterior in supine pcl it does not make much difference we had access from below this is actually ecirs position so the removal of the pelvic stone is through the middle calyx what we have punctured upper calyx we have not gone because already it was supra coast the kidney was not that low lying very clearly the puncture dilatation done up to 22 french the uh, stone uh, in the pelvis is broken into the pieces and all the pieces is a very hard stones with high hounds field units and now once the stone is broken into the multiple pieces they were flushed and 99% of the stones came out naturally by pushing from the water below and some of the fragments are removed but the only problem when compared to the prone pcnl here is it is through the middle calyx we don't know whether in prone we might have gone through the upper calyx but kidney was that not that low so at the end uh, we wanted to inspect uh, with the flexible ureteroscope from below so now after all the stones are removed like this the nearer to the pelvic ureteric junction the stone is broken and removed they were easily coming out of the 22 french the surgery did not took much time fast clearance has happened as expected uh, the migration to the upper calyx as happened from the middle calyx to the upper calyx entry was not easy in this case because of the acute angulation so we predicted some stone migration to the upper calyx and that's why first we did the flexi at the same time the main problem in this case is not able to identify the mouth of the isthmic calyx after searching with flexible scope as well as the nephroscope the mouth of the ischemic calyx was not identified and it is uh, uh, all the mucosal areas flushing with uh, contrast everything we have tried we had lost uh, now this is the pelvic ureteric junction now i tried to go to this upper calyx i tried to go to the isthmus both were not possible entire thing was uh, edematous because of the pelvic stone as expected and there is a um, guide wire pass from below then pelvic ureteric junction is assessed it is normal and then the inferior calyx was easily approached i thought it was isthmus but not it is a inferior inferior medial calyx so their stones were not there and one more thing is the isthmic stone is nicely seen we thought this is the isthmic but not this is the posterior stone this this is not isthmus because it is supine pcnl it was not isthmus and there was a now i did a flexible ureteroscopy to see any stones unfortunately some of the stones large were there in the upper calyx this is the advantage of ecirs this were the large stones most probably migrated and all these stones in different calyces are quickly fragmented you can see uh, the stones quick i i in fact injected contrast and tried to identify the isthmus 
and uh, fortunately in this case uh, fans sheet was there so quickly these were uh, aspirated and sucked into the access sheet so they were quickly fragmented all the fragments were sucked through the access sheet from the upper calyx as well as some part of the other calyces this did not took time entire system was collapsed so there wasn't any problem at the end the only thing remaining is isthmic stone this isthmic stone is nicely seen on the isthmus almost on the opposite side of the uh, spine after seeing the stone we th we tried a lot uh, to make complete stone free and uh, went into the multiple angles with flexible nephroscope flexible iridoscope and small nephro see this is the upper calyx of the system completely cleared so both the uh, uh, nephroscope and iridoscope are met and some of the fragments are given even i tried with flexible um nephroscope all the areas possible in the kidney that means uh, rigid nephroscope flexible nephroscope flexible iridoscope rgp could not identify the isthmus and i was thinking after clearing the stone see this is medial stone you can see on the opposite side there is a stone we carefully see along with the contrast so i tried a horizontal puncture above the aorta and ivc that's a little risky but i thought one or two attempts see i when i am crossing the ureter is going across but ureter will be much anterior i was watching with the flexible scope that any needle entry into the ureter will happen so two three attempts i took i was aiming primarily the stone i was injecting only saline to pass the guide wire it was not going it was not curling any any specific curl if it is done it might might have proceeded see you can see the stone so big not 3 mm 5 mm it will be multiple stones see it careful see i injected contrast when i, I hit the stone it went to the opposite side is my feeling but when i passed guide wire it went into a nice cavity so i thought i will do uh, the mini perk starge the 11.5 french dilatation and uh, single step dilatation up to that level and removed the guide wire and directly went in to my fortunateness i could see the stone i was very happy but only worry was which part of the kidney it has come and hit most probably it is parenchyma it was not bleeding while rgp injecting returning streak of contrast is seen in the ureter so this is communicating with the right side ureter only and entire ureter when it is inspected with flexible scope was normal so at the end uh, it was a horizontal puncture just above the aorta actually we came gradual descent technique because more anterior is safer the more a posterior will be on to the uh spine on to the uh, spine or the aorta or ivc so every time we kept that in mind very precisely in 0 degree 30 degree head end we were focusing the needle and the stone uh, small degrees we calculated and directly hit this isthmic stone uh, whether this removal of the stone will help the patient or not but uh, uh, the pcnl especially in supine pcnl horizontal puncture can reach uh, um, this type of the stone in prone it might have been very difficult to reach this stone because it will go through through it will go come uh, from the posterior to anterior uh, paraspinal and uh, over the spine the needle may not reach it so this is the complete clearance of the calyx while returning i injected contrast if you carefully see here see the contrast contrast is not going opposite side now see the ureter see the ureter is delineated here that means there was communication with this calyx with the ureter which was not seen with multiple searches even if we have seen we might have not gone with the angle into the isthmus so 
So it is even though PCNL is a semi-blind procedure with the logistics of this CM carefully, precisely this stone was hit. This is possible only when the stone volume is big and you can feel the stone with the needle. Thank you.